Okay, this video is going to go over the midpoint formula and how we use it to calculate elasticity in economics. So let's just start by writing the midpoint formula. And the trick for using and finding the midpoint formula is essentially to take the average of two points on a curve. So for example, if we just sketch our typical supply and demand graph, we may start at point A and move to point B. So if we were going to calculate the elasticity for this change, our starting point could be point A, our ending point would be point B, we would get one elasticity as we move from point A to point B. However, if we move from point B to point A, then we would get a different elasticity. So moving between these two points, we would get two different elasticity values. However, if we use the midpoint formula, then whether we move from point A to point B or point B to point A, we'll get the same elasticity value. So let's just look at an example real quick. Let's consider that the price at point A is 5, the quantity is going to be 10, the price at point B is 4, the quantity is going to be 20. If we use the midpoint formula, then what we're going to do is calculate the midpoint between these two values. So when we calculate the price elasticity of demand, what we'll get is moving from point A to point B, 5 minus 4 over 5 plus 4 divided by 2 divided by 10 minus 20 divided by 10 plus 20 divided by 2. And so it's this denominator right here where the midpoint formula comes into play. Midpoint. So the example we're going to get here is 1 over 4.5. The example we're going to get here is negative 10 over 15. And this ends up giving us uh, our value. And as you can figure out, whether we move from point A to point B or B to A, we're either going to get the negative in the denominator or in the numerator. So if we move from point B to point A, what we're going to get is negative 1 over 4.5 over 10 over 15. So you can see that by using the midpoint formula, our elasticity value is going to be the same regardless of which direction we move. Now imagine we don't use the midpoint theorem. and we move from point A to point B. Well, you can see that we're going to have 5 minus 4 over 5, because that's our initial value to get the percent change. Our price is going to be 10 minus 20 divided by 10. And so what we end up getting is 1 over 5 divided by negative 10 over 10. And so you can see that that is very different from the one where we got our midpoint formula calculating the elasticity. Now if we move from B to A, you can see that we'll get 4 minus 5 over 4 divided by 20 minus 10 over 20. And that's going to simplify to negative 1 over 4 divided by 10 over 20. And you can see that this is also going to be very different from our midpoint formula and from our moving from A to B and moving from B to A. So the reason that we use this tricky midpoint formula, it gives us a lot of extra math to do, but essentially what we're doing is we're just using that average point between our two points so that regardless of the direction we move, we're going to get that same elasticity value instead of saying, okay, what if we start from A, what is our elasticity gonna be? What if we start from B, what's our elasticity going to be? etc.